Well, welcome everyone. My name is Dev DeVrat. I am a senior assistant dean of international admissions here at Reed College in Portland, Oregon. Uh, a little bit about Reed really quick. We're a small private liberal arts college uh, here on the west coast of the US. Uh, 1,500 students from all 50 US states and 44 different countries. Um, big fans of Education USA. We've got a lot of students that uh, have gone through the programs um, or have been supported by Education USA. Um, so definitely familiar with them. Um, we're a small but mighty college. Uh, we're rated as highly some of the best college classroom experiences in the entire US uh, from the Princeton Review. Um, and this is a school where people come because they love to learn and they love to challenge ideas and ask tough questions. Um, this presentation today is going to be focused on the uh, writing your personal statement essay. Um, we will also talk a little bit about the read supplemental essay. Um, the conversation around the general essay the information is very broad. So this isn't just this can be applied to any college you apply for, not just read. Um, so hopefully that'll be helpful for all the other schools that you're applying for as well. Um, I know uh, most of you have your your cameras off right now. Um, that's totally fine. Um, if I, Zoom fatigue is a real thing, so I totally get it. If you are um, comfortable turning your camera on, I would love to look at other people's faces so it's not just my own, uh, but no, no pressure there. Um, as you think of questions, please throw your questions into the chat box um, as the presentation goes on. So I don't want you to forget your question. Uh, and then I will make sure to answer all the questions towards the end. Um, and then we'll kind of go from there. Um, awesome. So I'm going to just share my screen here. Um, great. Can we all see that okay? I'm going to assume that's a yes, because I realize I can't see any of you. Um, great. Okay. Thank you for commenting. Perfect. Great. Um, awesome. So, um, neither analytical nor creative, the personal essay is a combination of both that reveals who the student is. Your college essay is one of the primary ways in which we get to know you as a student. Um, we uh, are gonna ask for a lot of information on the application. A lot of that information that we ask for from you is very data specific, um, but the essay is very narrative, right? It is very specific to you. It is one of those things that allows us to get to know who you are um, as a person, especially because uh, Reed, along with many smaller liberal arts colleges, we're very community focused, right? The community is something that's so important to us and who we're allowing into that community is also really important to us. And the essays allow us to get to know um, who you are and, and who we're welcoming into our community. Um, something to keep in mind is, um, uh, the, the essay is not the only place that we look at your writing skills or look at you, the way in which you communicate to us, right? You've got your essay, you've got your supplemental essay, but things like email is also really important as well, right? So thinking about how do you communicate with the college over email? As a matter of fact, most colleges save every email you send us in your student account. Um, and then when we go back to review your application, we go back and look at all the different ways in which we've communicated, all the different ways in which we've connected. Um, so those emails are actually really important because we, we will look at those. Oh, and lastly, the, the essay also allows us to understand a little bit about your writing skills and your, what kind of skill sets you have coming in. We're not expecting you to be you know, published authors, obviously, when you're coming into college, but we're, we're just trying to get a sense of where your writing skills are at. Um, and so that's why this information is really important too, because you're gonna do a lot of writing in college. Um, and um, so we just we wanted to see wh where your level of writing skill is at prior to coming into college. Your whole freshman year will be working on strengthening your writing skills. So your entire first year of college will be focused on that. Um, but we want to see where you are uh, prior to that. That allows us to sort of understand where to work from. 
So we're going to do something called the objects exercise. So if you have a pen and paper handy, um, that would be great. Or if you want a second to go get one, um, it could be scrap paper or garbage paper. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. I'm not collecting anything. Uh, if you have your phone, um, you can use like your notes section or, or open up a text message to yourself. Um, what are the, the most challenging things about writing a college essay is what do I write about? Right. Um, and so with the we're going to do something called the objects exercise. Um, and in a minute, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read out a list of questions. And what I want you to do is write down the first thing that comes to your mind when I ask you this question. Um, and I'm going to go fast. So, you know, it doesn't have to be a long list. It doesn't have to be a comprehensive list. Um, just write the first couple of things that come to your mind as I ask you these questions. Um, so I'll wait 10 more seconds uh, to give you some time to find something to write with um, and some paper. Awesome. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, and like I said, um, uh, yeah, someone wrote in the chat box, the college essay guide. This is this is definitely from the college essay guide, um, which if you're not familiar with who the college essay guy is, um, college essay guy is a uh, is actually a person. Uh, I can't remember his Ethan. Ethan is his first name. Um, and he writes he has there's a website called the college essay guy or .org or something. Um, and it's an entire website dedicated to strengthening your college essay. Um, and so he offers a lot of uh, content and he has a really great podcast and stuff. So definitely check him out. We definitely took this from the college essay guide. So, um, uh, so okay, so like I said, I'm gonna start listing out a bunch of questions um, and um, uh, write down the first things that come to your mind, you know, as we, as I'm reading out these questions to you. What is the best gift you've ever been given? What is something in your bag right now or your backpack um, that is probably in nobody else's bag or backpack? If your house was on fire, what would you happily leave behind to burn? What's an object that represents regret? What's your favorite foods? Be careful with this next one. What is something you stole? <laughs> On the flip side, what is something you found? Last question, um, what is an object that represents your dreams? So hopefully you have some sort of a list in front of you, even if it's just a couple of items. Um, using an item is a great way to start thinking about how do you write an essay? So let me give you a great example. My object would be um, my car keys. So my car keys is something that um, uh, everybody has, um, right? A lot, of, a lot of folks have it, but here's why this is something that's unique for me. So um, when I was going to college, I didn't go to Reed. I went to a different school here in Portland. Um, I um, 
uh, we used to take the bus to school. Um, and the bus was fine, but um, oftentimes, you know, if there was tons of traffic, the bus would be late. And then I would miss, I, I would be late to class or I'd miss my first class. Um, or, you know, sometimes the bus would be really dirty and I didn't want to sit in that for, you know, half an hour. Um, my last, my last straw with my our bus was um, one day I was on the bus and I was sitting, I was eating a bagel. I was running late. I didn't have a chance to eat breakfast before I left. I was eating a bagel and uh, somebody got on the bus and took that bagel out of my hand and then just kept walking, sat in the back of the bus and ate it. Um, and th they probably needed that bus or they needed that bagel more than I did. And that's fine. But that was my last straw. That was my last thing um, that I was like, I... I'm not running the bus anymore. Literally the next week, I went and bought a brand new car. So um, it was not a school bus. It was a public bus. Uh, when I was 16 years old uh, to when I was 19 years old, I worked at a retail um, where I worked for a store, an office supply store. Um, and I saved up uh, $10,000 working for three years. Um, and I used that as a down payment. And I bought a brand new car fresh off the lot. Uh, I had never test drove the car. I never even saw the car. I just bought it. Uh, if you are uh, a car person, I bought a 2011 Honda CRV. Um, it's a it's an SUV. It is um, it, it was my baby, basically. I, I put in a lot of uh, work to be able to afford this car uh, brand new, that, something I definitely couldn't afford. Um, and uh, this car ended up becoming a symbol of access and privilege for me. Um, I used that car to keep going to college and I finished my degree. Um, I'm, the, I'm the first college grad in my entire family. Um, that college, uh, that car allowed me to get that degree, which allowed me to um, get, a, get a good paying job uh, right out of college. And I get to work uh, to um, help support my family with that pay. Um, that, call, that car allowed me to come to read every day um, and get to work with really awesome students like you. That car allowed me to move my sister into college um, and allowed her to get a degree and get an education. Um, so while this, you know, this car is more than just a car to me, right? This is a symbol of access. This is a symbol of pride um, and joy. And I, I absolutely love it. I, unfortunately, I just sold the car uh, uh, at the beginning of the year and I bought a brand new one. Um, I actually loved my car so much. I bought the same thing, but a newer version. Um, so I still have a Honda CRV, but instead of 2011, it's a 2021. Um, I loved the first one so much that I, I had to have another one. Um, but that's what the objects exercise is, right? This allows you to take an object in your life and tell a story with it. And that's what the purpose is. Now, you definitely don't have to use an object in your essay, but this is just one way to really help you start thinking about how you might communicate your values, your perspectives, your ideas um, in the essay. So these are the five keys to a personal statement. You don't have to write this list down. We're gonna go through each of these individually, uh, but these are the five different things that we're really going to focus on when talking about your essay. So the first one, we call it fill in the blanks. This is your college essay is the one thing that you have 100% control over in the entire application process. You cannot go back in time and do more uh, activities. You can't go back in time and change your grades. You can't control what a letter of recommendation is going to say about you. So your essay is quite truly the last thing that you have control over when you're writing your application. So make sure you use this space to tell us something new about you. Tell us something that we, we don't know from about you from the rest of your application. One of the biggest mistakes I see is students writing resumes as an essay. Um, so for example, um, I will often see essays where all students do is talk about all the different activities that they're involved with. That's awesome. That's great that you're involved with these activities. But I'm, I already know all that. I looked at your activities list in your application um, actually right before I read your essay. So I'm, that's, the information is uh, fresh in my mind. Um, 
you don't need to write a resume as an essay, right? This is an opportunity for you to tell us something new. Um, so we're gonna look at some examples of essays throughout this presentation. We're going to look at some weak examples and we're going to look at some strong examples. Um, the weak examples are just are things that we made up. This is obviously not a full essay. These are just a couple of sentences of the beginning of an essay, uh, but I think some of these are gonna do a great job of painting a picture for us. Um, I would love for you to tell me why you think this is a weak example or for our other ones, why you think it's a strong example. So I'm gonna read this out loud and then I would love for you to put in the comments or in the chat box, why you think this is a weak example. So in the 10th grade, I was a captain of the varsity cross country and basketball teams. I also started three theater performances that year and helped with the theater tech crew. It was a busy year. Last year, I started a recycling program at my school and did research with a neuroscience professor at Portland State University. This year, I'm dividing more time to my classes, but playing saxophone in the jazz band. So take a second to think, read through this essay. Um, I would love to hear why you think um, this is a weaker essay. So some of you are already commenting, this essay just states the honor section, it's a resume, it's not eye-catching, no personality. Uh, it's weak because it's a paragraph simply listing activities. Yeah, basically you're all correct. Uh, this is basically just an essay where students are listing their accomplishments, listing their resume, listing the things that they've already done, right? That's great that you've done all these things, but I already know all that. Tell me something new. Now, if you wanna take one of these things, let's say um, the recycling program that you started and talk a little bit more about that one thing and expand upon that, that's fine. Um, but what, what you're doing here is listing everything that you've ever done while you were in school. Um, and, and that doesn't help us with anything, right? That doesn't tell me a little bit about you. Be creative with the everyday. Uh, we recognized you are all, you know, 17, 18, 19 years old when you're coming into college. You have not cured cancer yet, and that's okay. If you did cure cancer, put that in your college application. We wanna know that. Uh, but there's a good chance you did not cure cancer. Uh, we recognize, you know, you probably haven't done these really insanely dramatic or life altering things by the time you're applying to college. That's okay. I think there's a misconception that you have to write about really, um, you know, uh, mind blowing uh, or, um, you know, really um, uh, traumatic or uh, really large moments about your life in order to write a good college essay. That's not true. We actually care more about who you are on the daily versus who you are in those dramatic situations, right? Uh, because who you are from day to day tells me more about who you are, who you'll be on campus than the dramatic moment, right? Um, also, I wanna know who you are right now. If you did this really awesome thing five years ago, 10 years ago, that's cool for you five, 10 years ago, but what does that mean for you uh, today and who you are now, right? That's who we wanna know because who you are now is going to be the closest representation um, to who you'll be uh, when you're on the college campus. Um, I will tell you a great story. I remember being at a college fair um, a couple of years ago, and I remember a student coming up to my table and saying, Deb, I'm so sorry. I would love to apply to read. I'm in the I'm in the process of starting my nonprofit organization, and I just haven't finished yet. That's okay. We don't need you to start a nonprofit organization to apply to read. If you want to start a nonprofit organization, by all means, go for it. That's great for you. Uh, but that's not a requirement of the application. We don't expect you to do these, you know, really um, giant things um, in order to write an effective essay. Uh, there's some questions about financial aid here. Um, I will answer that question towards the end. Um, uh, the comments they have internationals with under 10 EFC. Um, 
rather than speculating um, on what our financial aid process looks like, give me a chance to answer that question for you towards the end. So I'll, I'll definitely be talking about that. Um, great, uh, here's a great week example. The summer after my junior year, I went to Panama with my church youth group to volunteer. We worked every day building homes, playing with the children of the village and developing an irrigation system. I thought I was going to help people, but really I was the one who was helped the most. Why is this a weak example? It's a cliche, absolutely. Selfish? Yeah, I can maybe see that a little bit. It's a typical essay, there's no details. It tells rather than shows. Okay, great. Thinking about uh, vainglorious, I don't think I've ever heard that word. That's interesting. Um, there's no reflection. Uh, how does it impact the person? Yeah, you're all spot on. Thinking about that last slide I talked about, this is talking about a very dramatic moment in their life as opposed to the daily, right? The, there's no problem with going on a church youth group. There's no problem doing volunteer work. That's awesome. Here's what the issue is. There's probably 30 other people that went on this trip with you. How is your experience any different than their experience, right? Now, granted, if this is just the first couple of sentence, if the essay were to continue on, maybe we learn a little bit more about how it impacted them specifically, right? Um, but we don't know that for sure. This beginning of the essay isn't really telling us that that's going to be the case. Um, and we don't know, how, you know what, how is their experience you know, um, any different than um, anyone else's experience? Like, right, how is it different uh, than, um, you know, Erica's experience? How is it different than Ava's experience? Um, how is it, you know, how is it different than Dana's experience? You all have, might have gone on the same trip, um, but you all might have had different experiences. Um, and that's what I want to focus on, right? So I, I, it's okay that you did this awesome volunteer trip. That's Kudos to you, I commend you for that. But think about what was, how is that different than anybody else who's ever gone on uh, some sort of a, a mission trip or church or youth group trip to do um, volunteer work. You also wanna be careful um, when you're talking about this, if you're gonna talk about this kind of volunteer ex experience, being careful not to talk about it in a way in which we call the savior complex, right? So the savior complex means I went there and I saved the day. They were all, um, uh, you know, their life was ruined before I came there. And, and I did this volunteer work and um, I helped change their lives, right? Be careful about coming off like that because that can be problematic as well. Um, and um, uh, so just something to think about as you're, as you're writing this essay. Be focused, right? It's all about depth and not breath. We want you to narrow the scope of your essay um, and be concise with what you're saying. I like to think about your, uh, when I'm thinking about your essay, I like to think about this in the perspective of a uh, your room. So let's say <clears throat> I'm standing in the doorway of your bedroom and I'm looking around your room um, and I'm looking at a lot of things, right? There might be paint, different paint colors on the wall. There might be um, all these Justin Bieber posters all over your walls. I'm not judging you. Maybe a little bit, that's okay. Taylor Swift is a better singer anyways. Um, maybe you've got, uh, maybe your room is messy. Maybe your room is clean. Maybe you've got um, books everywhere or video games everywhere or clothes everywhere. Um, right? That tells me a lot of information about you. That's almost too much, right? That's a lot of depth, um, but not breadth. Now, let's say I closed your door and I uh, look into the keyhole. Let's say if it was like an old timey keyhole and I can look into your keyhole and I see one specific thing in your room and I have to use that one thing to talk about who you are as a whole person, right? That's what we're asking you to do. So let's say if I look through that keyhole and I see a trophy 
how does what what does that what does the story of that trophy tell me about who you are as a whole person and that's what we want to hear here's a strong example i i mentioned earlier the weak examples are ones that we made up the strong examples are, are snippets of real college essays that we've received from Reed students. I wear overalls to school, dark wash denim, baggy pant legs, and two straps over my shoulders, fastened tight with two copper buttons. I don't wear them for farming, painting, or railroad construction, but for the pure and sweet pleasure of wearing trousers that are held up by my shoulders. It's not an everyday thing, but when I wear them, I feel invincible. I'll give you a second to think about why this is a strong example. Um, feel free to put that in the chat box. Um, I'm going to turn my camera on for just two seconds while you think. Awesome. So why do we think this is a strong example? So you're using few words and clear points. Sounds like part from a book. Awesome. Writing example of a strong, uh, hold on, sorry. The, the comments are coming in too fast. Daily life situation is described in a creative way. Awesome. You can imagine this essay, it's a hook. There's a little bit of vulnerability in there, okay. Uh, it's uncommon uh, start. There's a narrow scope to the story. Um, awesome. Yeah, you are all very correct. Here's why I like um, here's why I like this um, this essay so much. It takes this everyday thing, right? It's literally a pair of pants. And they talk a lot about it, right? They unpack it um, and talk about how it makes them feel, right? Oops, wrong example. Um, oh my gosh, wrong way. Here it is. Um, uh, so basically, it takes this thing, right, these uh, de uh, denim overalls, um, and it paints a really great picture about who that student is, right? Um, this person goes beyond just the description of the pants uh, and talks about the way in which it makes them feel, the way in which, um, you know, right, it makes them feel invincible. Um, it, it, she, uh, this person actually talks a lot about... Um, uh, painting a picture for us uh, and helping us understand who they are as an, in, as an individual. And that's why we like this essay so much. Um, if you were to read the rest of this essay, it's even better. Um, it becomes a really strong essay. Um, it does a great job talking a little bit more about who that student is. This next uh, slide is probably the most important slide out of this entire presentation. If you take nothing else away from this presentation, please let it be this. So this is something we call the so what moment. Um, I, every time I look at an essay, um, I always think to myself, so what? What is the purpose of this? Uh, this is telling us why your topic is important, right? This is, if, if basically if I had to describe it another way, I would say that this is the heart or the thesis of your essay, right? This is the main point. This is why we should care about what you're writing. And I don't say that to sound harsh or mean, but what I'm trying to get, uh, what I'm trying to, the point that I'm trying to come across with is this is telling the reader, what's the, what's that really, what's that one important thing about who you are um, or, or your value or, or your, uh, the, the message that you're trying to communicate about yourself. Um, this is moving beyond the description alone, right? So um, sometimes pe people spend too much time with that descriptive piece. Um, and it's moving beyond that description. Um, and it is really focusing on um, who are you as an individual? And what are some things that are um, important about you? So here's a great example. I do truly adore lobster fishing. My love for it extends past the obvious, past the fact that I make money, past the fact that I get to work outside in the beautiful summer weather. 
It extends far beyond the free lobsters, even past the blossoming friendships that I have with my colorful coworkers. I owe it a vast debt of gratitude. Lobster fishing opened my eyes to hard work and determination, and in doing so, allowed me to flourish substantially in high school. Why is this a strong example? <clears throat> what would you say is the so what moment of this essay? Demonstrates passion, awesome. Awesome, so I'm seeing a theme of passion. It goes beyond the description, it's a unique topic. And the topic does not have to be unique. Um, I'm perfectly fine with a boring topic. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about topic uh, a little, in a second. Um, but this is uh, just happens to be a really interesting topic, right? It, they talk about how this activity shaped their life and impacted them. Great analysis, bright ideas from the person, shows personality, yeah. Um, if I had to pick uh, a sentence here, um, that would be the so what moment. For me, I would say it's the last sentence. Lobster fishing opened my eyes to hard work and determination, and just doing so, it allowed me to flourish substantially in high school. Yeah, a couple. Yeah, a couple of you hit on the um, hit that in the comments. Um, Basically, this person is taking this thing, lobster fishing, that they do, and they're telling us in a very clear sentence why it's important to them, right? It teaches them hard work, it teaches them determination, and they use these skill sets to be successful in high school. That is perfect. That is a great so what moment. Here's something else I want you to think about as well. This essay compared to the overall essay we just looked at are very different voices, right? The overall essay was very poetically written, whereas this one is a little bit more straightforward essay, right? And that's okay. Um, you don't have to be this like, you know, poetic writer. You don't have to be a strong, you know, you don't have to use this really strong academic voice in your writing. Write in whatever voice is comfortable for you. I'm a very humorous writer. I like to throw in jokes in my writing. Sometimes it's uh, so dry humor that you almost miss it when you're reading my writing. Um, and, um, and that's just the way that I'm comfortable with writing. Um, write in whatever voice is comfortable for you. The college essay is definitely not the place uh, for you to start experimenting with different voices. Um, write in whatever voice um, is the most comfortable to you. Proofread, proofread, proofread. Keep in mind, um, these, are, these are some very basic things, uh, but these are still things that we see all the time. Spelling and grammar, these things are important, right? Um, the thesaurus is not your friend. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've seen an essay come in where um, uh, a student has written, written an essay and then they've, they think to themselves, this doesn't sound academic enough. Um, and they use the thesaurus to replace some random words to sound like more academic um, or, or whatever. And let me tell you, um, that makes your essay sound worse. Uh, we could usually tell when, that's, when that happens. Um, so, you know, write, like I said, write whatever voice is comfortable for you. You don't have to be an incredibly authentic, you know, an incredibly um, uh, uh, academic writer. You don't have to be a poetic writer. Write whatever way works for you. Make sure you read your essay out loud. Um, so uh, that's the best way to catch mistakes um, is because uh, when you read your essay uh, in your head to yourself, your brain overlooks some of those common mistakes. But when you read it out loud, you're forced to look at every individual word as a separate word, and that helps you catch those mistakes. And make sure you're organized. Um, 
you want to uh, use an outline. To this day, I still use outlines. If I'm gonna send a mass email to all of my students, I will open up a document and I will create an outline and then fill in that information. Um, using outlines to stay organized will be a great tool for you to make sure that your essay flows. So here's a weak example. I'm not gonna ask you to pick out the issues. This one's a pretty dramatic one. Um, so I will do that. But um, uh, you know, this is a, a, a great example of a terrible example. Uh, Reed is my dream school. As a small university, we are not a university. We're a college. There's actually a difference. Um, universities have uh, graduate and PhD programs. Uh, colleges tend to be specifically uh, bachelor's degrees only. Uh, located in the Pacific Northwest, Northwest should be capitalized. Reed has everything I could ever want in a college. The psych programs emphasis on neuro is perfect for me. Make sure you spell out those words, right? The psychology programs emphasis on neuroscience is perfect for me. I'm engrossed in my AP Psyche course. I've never heard of AP Psyche course. Um, I also love hiking and skiing. I know I contribute a lot in the classroom. So it looks like we have some um, contraction and grammar issues. I'm used to speaking up because my current school uses the Harkness method. Um, Read is a place where I can metamorphose into a true intellectual. So apparently we're all butterflies metamorphosing now. Um, so there's some grammar issues here. There are some abbreviation issues here. There's some contraction issues here. Um, so there's a variety of issues in this essay, right? Um, now this is a very dramatic uh, representation of an essay, but we do see some essays that come in like this, right? Um, it is hard for me to advocate for you as a student when your essay comes in looking something like this. So take the time to proofread your essay. Have one or two other people look at your essay to help you proofread your essay. Um, you know, make sure you are um, slowing down when it comes to writing these, these essays. Um, because like I mentioned in the beginning, right? This is how we learn the most about you. This tells us who you are as a person. Um, so you don't wanna rush that experience. Awesome, there is my email address. It's also above my head. Um, uh, I'd love to open up to questions. Um, if I don't answer your question um, today, uh, please send me an email and I would love to be able to help answer your question. Um, I'll also put my uh, email address in the chat box towards the end. Um, I also want to, before we, uh, feel free to keep putting your questions in. Um, before we talk about those questions, I also want to talk a little bit about the Read Supplemental Essay. So Read Supplemental Essay is called the Paideia Essay. The Paideia, as Paideia is a Greek word, um, and it essentially means uh, for the sake of education. Um, and it's a real event that we have here in um, every January between our fall and our spring semester. And basically what it is, is it's an opportunity for um, faculty, staff, and students uh, to tell us, uh, to, to apply to teach a class on any topic they want. And when I say any topic, I mean anything. We've seen everything from the history of comic books to slavery in America, to underwater basket weaving, to how to become a drag queen. We had a virtual napping class this last year. Um, that was, uh, I was really bummed to miss it. Um, and basically uh, what the essay, oh, thank you. Somebody put in the, um, the exact prompt in the chat box. Um, basically what this essay is asking you is if you were selected to teach a class at Reed, what would you teach and why? Um, and you can do anything you want with this essay, right? Um, you can talk about something academic. You can talk about something fun. You can talk about something silly. Um, we're not looking for a specific topic. It doesn't matter to us what you write about. What we're wanting to know from this essay is what are you excited about? You know, what is your passion? What do you, uh, what do you want to share with others? What do you want to teach others if you have the chance? So that's what the Pidea essay is designed to do. Um, you don't have to write it as a course description, write it as a, you know, your traditional essay, um, because that's how we get to know you better. Awesome. Okay, 
Uh, let's open up to questions. So um, I'm going to go back to the beginning really quick because um, I know there are some great questions that came out throughout the session. Um, so yes, the session is being recorded. I know a couple of you asked that, um, and I believe it'll be available on the Education USA uh, Kazakhstan YouTube channel. Um, financial aid, that's correct. So Reed does offer financial aid to domestic and international students. It's the same exact process, regardless of who you are. Reed uh, meets 100, we don't do any merit-based scholarships. We don't do any uh, athletic scholarships. We don't do scholarships in general. Um, Reed financial aid is 100% based on your demonstrated need. So at the at time of application, you'll also do the CSS profile. If you are looking for financial aid, we do require you to submit the CSS profile at the same time that you submit your application. So you'll submit your CSS profile. If you're not familiar, the CSS profile is a financial aid application um, from the College Board. So the College Board is that same organization that puts on the SATs, the AP program, um, and uh, you'll submit the CSS profile. Reed will calculate something based off that application called your EFC. This is your expected family contribution. This is how much your family can afford to spend on your education based on um, your family's financial situation. So let's say your EFC is ten thousand uh, dollars. It could be an, it could be any number, right? It could be ten thousand. It could be fifty thousand. It could be zero. That's okay. Uh, what we're trying to understand is what is your financial aid situation. So let's just use some numbers really quick. Let's say the full. Let's say your EFC is ten thousand um, dollars, and the full cost of attendance at Reed is about seventy five thousand. That means there's a sixty five thousand dollar gap in between. Um, your financial ability to pay and um, the full cost of attendance. Reed will cover that gap at 100%. So that's what we mean that we meet 100% demonstrated need. Um, sorry, I, I'm trying to read through all the examples and then find the question as well. Oh, great question. Why can't I just list my skills? Why is it necessary for me to write a whole essay about who I am? Because writing an essay about who you are as a person is a skill set in and of itself. Um, and and we're again like this, like I mentioned in the beginning of this essay, right? We're trying to learn. Uh, we're, the essay accomplishes two things. Number one, we're trying to learn more about who you are as a person. But number two, we're also trying to assess your writing skills. Um, and if you just write me a bullet point list of your, um, you know, your uh, your skill sets, you who you are, your values. I learned nothing about your writing skills. All I see is a list of things that um, you make up. That's the other thing, right? Is I have no way of verifying this list. But when you write an essay, you're also sharing a little bit more information about why these skill sets are the way they are. What values do you have and why do you have these values? Where does it come from? Um, uh, those are the kinds of things that we are trying to understand from you that we wouldn't get if it was just a list. Is it important to clearly define my so what part or is it fine to let the admissions officer understand out of the context? That's a great question. Um, I would say do your best to make that so what moment as clear and defined as possible. If I have to start guessing what your so what moment is, then sometimes that can be a problem because if I guess the wrong thing and then I'm trying to interpret the rest of your essay around the wrong so what, um, then your essay doesn't make sense anymore. And that does you a disservice, right? Um, so always lay it out for the reader, make it as clear and concise as possible.
What do you think about telling about your weakness in the personal statement? Yeah, if that's an approach you want to try out, for sure do that. What I would suggest, though, is then make sure to talk about why that's important. Um, what does that tell us about you? What are you learning from this quote unquote weakness of yours, right? Like make sure you're providing the context um, because that's, that's really important for us to understand, right? If I decide to submit my supplemental essay later in the application process, not all at the same time as all the other documents, will it affect my decision or financial decision? Um, yes, so we need, I can't look at your application until we receive everything. Um, I can start looking at your application without some of the materials, but this isn't, a, this isn't an optional item. We do need to have a supp your supplemental essay. Um, and so in order for me to be able to do that, um, I do need to have all the pieces. Otherwise I have an incomplete application um, that I'm looking at. Um, so you definitely wanna submit all, uh, you know, if, if it's a couple of days, you know, here and there, um, that's different, that's okay, right? Like, maybe your recommendation letter is going to come a couple of days later than your essay, that's okay, right? Um, but if you're talking about like a month of difference, your application is just going to sit there. I can't look at your application um, until I get all of the materials. Do colleges give you specific topics for the essay? That's a great question. Uh, if you apply with the college app, there's six different prompts that you can choose from, um, and you can pick whichever topic you wanna write about. I, does not, it does not matter to me. One is not better than the other. If you use the coalition app, they have something called the locker item. Um, this is where you get to submit like a, a, a piece of work that you already created. So that could be um, an essay you wrote for a class, it could be a poem, it could be an art piece, it could be a variety of those things. Um, what we would like to use, uh, and what we'd like to know is, um, why is why was that item important to you? Why did you include that item? What does that tell us about you? So make sure you provide some of that context. Read College and World Rank. Reed College does not participate in rankings. And here's why. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, uh, we had a couple of students and a professor um, do their semester project on the US News and World Report ranking. And they reverse engineered the ranking system and discovered quite a few holes in the system. The, you, the world ranking process is not an effective tool. Do not use that to measure the success of a college. It is a uh, system rooted in white supremacy. It's a system rooted in um, racist uh, ideology. It's a system rooted in um, wealth. And it does not tell you anything about a college. Um, as of, so we, we reverse engineered their algorithm and discovered all of these holes. Um, and then we published that information online and we, we made national news around this. Um, if, you, if you've ever heard of Malcolm Gladwell, he's a Canadian scholar and he has a um, uh, fantastic uh, podcast called Revisionist History. And he actually did two uh, podcast episodes about college ranking. I highly recommend listening to them. The first episode is called Lord of the Rankings. The second one is called um, Project Dillard. Um, and they talk about why the ranking system is so flawed. As a matter of fact, he interviews the CEO of US News and World Report and asks him these questions. He says, Reed College and some of these other organizations have debunked your process. Um, so what do you have to say about that? Why is this, why should anybody participate in this process? And he can't answer that question. He stumbles through the whole interview. Um, and it's really awkward to listen to him actually. Um, so um, I'm telling you right now, do not, uh, do not utilize the US will, uh, news world, world, US News and World Report rankings or any other ranking system. These ranking systems are fairly subjective, right? It's a great place to start if you're just trying to get an idea of what kind of colleges exist. But do not let that be your end all be all, right? There are so many other ways to assess a college. Um, and using a list that somebody arbitrarily makes up 
is not an effective tool, right? I could do the same thing. I could go up online and create a rule and say, this is the best list possible. And I could put read as number one and who would know any different, right? Um, that's basically what these rankings are. Um, does read accept letters of continued interest? Yeah, you're welcome to submit any supplemental material that you'd like. Um, make sure you, uh, if you, you can email those directly to the admissions account, don't send it to me directly, send it to our general admissions account, um, and make sure you put your first and last name and your application ID number, so that way we can um, find your application and then attach it. So if you wanted to send a letter of continued interest, if you wanted to send supplemental like artwork or photography or poems that you've written, uh, if you want to send a video, uh, a link to a video, uh, we, I've had students send me like links to their Instagram page because that's where all their art is. That's totally fine. You can submit whatever you'd like. Um, what about scholarships? As I mentioned, we just know scholarships. It's all based on demonstrated financial need. If you earn any external scholarships outside of READ, you're welcome to bring those in and we'll use that in your financial aid package. What does READ value in applications the most? Uh, social contribution, leadership skills, diverse interests? That's a great question. Um, so, um, there's two things that I think we look at really heavily in the application process. The first is intellectual curiosity. Um, and that can look like a number of things. That could look like taking advanced classes. Um, maybe your school doesn't offer advanced classes. That could look like, you know, you're really into this really specific thing, like quantum physics, for example, and you love to research it um, on the side. Um, and you've, or maybe you've, studied with a professor at a college um, and you're helping them with research. These are great ways to show intellectual curiosity. Those are not the only ways to show it. There's hundreds of ways to show it. Um, and that's what we're just trying to understand. The other thing that we look at is how do you foster community? Um, community is big for us here at Reed. So community for you can look like a variety of things. Um, it could look like, um, uh, maybe at events and that, maybe you did clubs and organizations while you were in school. Uh, maybe you can't, uh, you don't have the privilege of doing that because you uh, have to go home and take care of a younger sibling or an older grandparent uh, or work a part-time job to help support your family. That's community as well. Maybe you like to do community service work. That's community. Um, so no right or wrong answer to any of these questions, but really just how do you relate to them? That's what we're trying to understand. Keep in mind, like, uh, Reed does what we call a holistic review of the application process. What does that mean? It basically means not one of these things defines you as an individual. Your grades do not define you as an individual. Your letters of recommendation do not define you as an individual. These are all uh, individual. I like to think about this as a puzzle. These are all individual puzzle pieces. You're giving these puzzle pieces to me as an admissions counselor. My job is to put the puzzle together to see what the full picture is. Um, so that means each of these puzzle pieces individually is really important but it doesn't define the whole picture, right? And that's what we're trying to understand. Um, IELTS. So if you, if you attended an English medium school or an English medium program for at least two years, we do not require English proficiency testing. Um, if your uh, language of instruction in your school was not an English medium school, um, and then we do require proficiency. We require the IELTS or the Duolingo or the TOEFL. It doesn't matter to us which one you use. Um, there's not a specific score we're looking for. We're just trying to understand what your level of proficiency is. Um, so there's not, I don't have like a score that you need to score in order to be admitted. We're just trying to understand who, where you're at. Um, awesome, we've got three more minutes. Uh, I recognize I'm not going to get to everybody's questions. Um, so really quick, what I'm going to do is um, uh, end it here. Um, I'm going to put my email address in the chat box. Um, I'm also going to share my screen one more time. Give me one second. Um, I'm going to share a QR code. Uh, so this QR code is, uh, here it is. Um, 
if you scan this QR code, um, it'll allow you to sign up for our read mailing list. Um, I promise you, we're not going to spam you uh, with information. We're not going to like sell your information. This is just if you would like to sign up uh, and uh, read will send you occasional emails to help you learn more about the college. We'll send you emails about application tips and tricks. We'll send you reminders. We'll send you updates about the application. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, if you're interested in that uh, definitely scan that and um, uh, join that mailing list. I'm also going to put a link that's this this if you click on this link, it'll take you to the same form as the QR code. Uh, so if you don't have a smartphone or your camera is not working or whatever, you can click on that link instead and sign up for the same exact thing. Um, I, if you're even remotely thinking about READ, I recommend signing up. So we have you in our system and you can start getting some of those helpful emails. Um, you'll get emails from me. Uh, with reminders and tips and tricks as well. So um, definitely, um, definitely a great way to um, get some good and helpful information. Um, yeah, uh, hopefully uh, this was all useful to you all. This was hopefully beneficial. Um, I hope this helped. Um, like I said, um, if I didn't answer your question, I, I sincerely apologize. Please, please, please send me your question uh, to my email address. I'm happy to respond and answer it um, and, uh, and be able to, to do whatever I can to support you. Um, if you have other questions about READ or college in general, feel free to uh, reach out to me as well. I promise you, you're not bothering me. Um, that's something that students always tell me. Um, I don't want to bother you. You're not bothering me. This is my job. I love talking to students and helping you out. This is why I do this work. Um, so please reach out. I'm always happy to help. Um, that being said, uh, thank you all uh, so much. Hopefully you all have a great rest of your day um, and uh, good luck in the application process.